The Chant is a psychological survival horror game that takes place on a fictional island filled with nut jobs. Yeah. So you take the part of Jess, a emotionally crippled and damaged young lady that is in dire need of relaxation and some spiritual mumbo jumbo, I guess. And she calls her friend Kim and heads to the island. Now, the island has been a place of ritual worship and, uh, yeah, cult. 100% cult. Totally 100% crazy voodoo level BS cult. Doesn't this all feel a little bit culty? Don't be silly. And this is where the story kind of takes off. You take part in some sort of happy ritual, which opens the realm of Cthulhu, uh, otherwise known as the Gloom. And in the Gloom, you have a lot of weird, creepy, floral abominations that want to eat your brains and soul. I'm fairly certain it's your soul they're mainly after. Now, this aspect of the game is pretty awesome. In terms of the way it looks and the way it feels, it is a very, very tense game as you play through it. And the intro to the game is relatively... What's the word? Blunt and to the point. Uh, there's not a huge amount of faffing around and dealing with things. It kind of just suddenly goes, oh yeah, shit's going down. Uh, and I quite like that aspect of it. Now, let's break the game down into a little bit more digestible bites and talk about, first off, the visual style and the graphics of the game. Now, what I'll say is the graphics aren't exactly the absolute pinnacle of graphics ever. They're good, though. They are good, and the visual style of the game is actually pretty awesome. Now, if you know about New Age kind of stuff like mandalas, um, the, you know, all these different kind of symbolism things, then the game is, makes a bit more sense in the way its art style has went. And there is some pretty cool things in there. Um, the enemy, the, the main kind of enemy is this floral flower thing, and it looks like a mandala. So it, it kind of gives this whole dark vibe to mandalas that, yeah, mandalas are actually interdimensional beams that want to suck your brains out. Which, yeah, I I'm totally dig that. In terms of the way that the character models look, at times they feel a little bit plasticky. Um, some of the characters are very animated in comparison to others. Some of them look better than others. And I do think there is some little uh, shader issues in the game. But overall, the graphics and the art style is actually stunning and I really enjoy it. And the thing about this uh, this company, Brass Token, that has made this game, this, as far as I can tell, is their first foray into an actual official video game, which is actually really encouraging. I'm looking forward to what they come up with next, because this this is actually very visually good. <laughs> it's like visually good is probably it sounds really um, condescending, but visually it's it's it's. Impressive isn't the right word because it is just good. It's not like blown my freaking balls off, but the art style is fan freaking tastic. I love the iconography and the look of the enemies. I love the the gloom. Outside of the gloom, it's just, you know, boring normal world. There's not much to say about that. The world is kind of mundane and boring that's why we play video games but in the actual gloom yeah really impressive so let's talk about the gameplay itself now the chant has a system of mind body and spirit each of these has a meter which will gradually go down now mind has a, a the kind of main thing of it is involving the gloom when you're in the gloom your mind meter is constantly depleting and on top of that against certain enemies they have attacks that attack your mind and if your mind gets to the, like, the bottom line you don't die you go into a panic attack state but what this does is it enables well it disables you from being able to fight back so your only option at this point is to flee when it comes to body you can die if your body goes to zero so obviously body is just a standard health bar and there's not really much else to say about it. Spirit is where it becomes interesting. Now, spirit can be used in two ways. You can either use your spirit to use fantastical abilities that you find along the way, including summoning 
demons from the afterworld, or making spikes come out of the ground and stab things. And then the last main important thing is you can meditate to calm your mind. So you have to find this, this balance with mind and spirit of whether you should calm or you should use the abilities. And there is limited resources in this game. You get three different herbs that increase, or rather, replenish your mind, body, and spirit. And you need to kind of find a balance of when to use each uh, and not kind of overspend yourself. It's quite an interesting little mechanic. And sometimes the mind attacks come in the form of things that happen in the game that you need to have press a button prompt to avoid. So there is that. And I, I quite enjoyed it. It's a unique type of mechanic. I've never, I've not really seen that in any other games where you've got three stats that kind of counterbalance each other. And someone else might have seen that. There might be other games out there that I haven't played that have this similar kind of mechanic. But it was unique to my personal experience. Now, the combat system uh, can be summed up by the word basic. You get three different main weapon types that pretty much all amount to being the same thing uh, they do different effects on different enemies and that that is very much a thing you also get to throw like a petrol bomb and a jar of your own piss uh, and salt for some reason um, i know spiritual things salt i get it but when it comes to the combat system itself it's not that complicated however the problem kind of lies in the fact that there's limited resources so while the combat system isn't that complicated you're constantly having to strike a balance of do i fight this thing or do i just leg it because i'll be honest if you fight everything you might have an issue long term in the game constantly scrambling searching for herbs mid-fight is very stressful at times and to an extent that adds something to it and makes it like stressful fights are actually really rewarding when you get through them i find in video games and this i felt there was quite a lot of stressful fights where i'm like oh jesus oh jesus oh jesus i've not got enough i've not got enough and then i barely kill something so i i found the combat system while it is basic it was actually quite rewarding at the same time now when it comes to character development and progression it's pretty much an age-old rpg skill tree most games have skill trees these days it's nothing groundbreaking nothing amazing i just thought i'd mention it and say that there is a skill tree that can increase your stats and increase your resistances or make things more effective there's a load of different things that you can focus on if you want to focus on combat you can if you want to focus on you know just surviving you can it just depends on what way you want to play the game realistically now, the story of the game focuses around Prismic Science, a hocus-pocus, hippy-dippy cult from the 70s that apparently uh, birthed eldritch abominations, which has been resurrected by the grandson of the founder, who didn't really know what he was getting into. And when it comes to the characters in the game, there's not a huge amount of people to interact with. And I'll be honest, most of the time you interact with these people, you are literally getting their life story dumped into your brain via the gloom because when you pick up different crystals you can go into different portions of the gloom the gloom the gloom and this kind of gives you an insight into the characters specifically and while I, I would say that the characters aren't exactly the best written characters in the world you at least get some information some backstory on them and understand them a little bit the rest of the story is kind of delivered to you via notes that you find around the map and tapes that you can put into projectors where the ominous voice of the founder of prismic science talks about some psychopathic nonsense um which quite often is very relevant to the story but unsettling and chilling a lot of the time like beating people over rocks and oh, the guy is is an awful person and this is the thing about the game you get to look into the hearts and minds of the people that are with you who are looking for some solace and some rest from their inner demons and this is the thing these people face their inner demons you face their inner demons it's a very very fucked up ride and it's quite good. 
Now, let's talk about some negatives of the game. Now, the first off is the puzzles in the game. In any survival, horror, psychological kind of type game, there's obviously going to be puzzles. And these ones reminded me very much of Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, the, you know, early Resident Evil games, where it was, go here, pick up X, put X into slot, or combine things to put X into slot. Uh, very simple. And there were some puzzles that were a bit more complicated, but they were few and far between. So I really would have felt that more complicated and in-depth puzzles could have been had. On top of that, I think that would have taken away from maybe the the, the combat or the trying to avoid enemies, but I, I don't really know. It's, it's hard to say. Then the next kind of point I'd make is that the game is quite short, in my opinion. It took me just under seven hours to complete, and if I played it on the max hardness, uh, maybe it would have taken me longer. Now, I didn't collect every single collectible in the game. I didn't find everything. So there is that, that kind of thing to it where I didn't explore maybe as much as I could have. I might have missed stuff, all that kind of thing. So there is very much me going through it was, let's just regard it as a speed run. So at the minimum, you're looking at about six, seven hours of playing the game to complete it. And that in a sense, is also a good complaint to have. Because if I'm complaining that it was too short, it means I enjoyed it. So I, I'd see that as a kind of good complaint to have about a game, is that you want more. And this studio, as I said, is a fledgling studio, so hopefully in the future they have bigger, longer games with the same level of, you know, fun. Then my other complaint is the combat system and the skill tree they're very shallow and there could have been a lot more depth put into them at the same time again it's the same kind of thing where i feel it would have taken away from the whole panic level psychological thing of it if i could get super overpowered and broken and just completely annihilate enemies with the power of my mind but it is a complaint that when it comes to if you're going to add a skill tree and, and a combat system you want it to be you, you want to be overpowered in some senses. You want to be like, feel strong and powerful. But I didn't feel strong and powerful. I felt like a young girl flailing herbs at demons. And that added to the fear and the, the anxiety of like, oh god, I need to run away. So I think that was intentional to an extent. But overall, the game is very, very nice, very fun. And I would heavily recommend that you play it. I mean, it's really up to yourself if you think the price tag is worth a game that's only maybe going to take you seven hours to complete. But as I said, there's replayability to it. And I very much speedran it as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not good at speedrunning. Um, so yeah, I definitely think the chant is a little hidden gem that a lot of people will get a lot of enjoyment out. And I hope it births a series of games from Brass Token and Prime Matter. I hope they make an entire franchise out of this, or at least in their next games, bring in key elements from this one, because I think it worked really well, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I hopefully you guys will too. And as I said, I got this game from a free key from Keymailer. Um, I'll leave a link down below to the game itself on Steam, if you want to take a look at it. And... If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Because if you guys like these types of videos, I'll make these types of videos. Anyway guys, I'll catch you next time, and hopefully you don't end up in the gloom.